Hey, how's it going? And today we wanted to talk about the difference between a scale box and a size box. And I know some people have found this confusing. You might have found it confusing. I know there's certainly room for confusion. So I hope to help you have a better understanding of how and when you might use these. So I'm just in a widget blueprint right here and I just have a canvas panel on the scene here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for we're going to kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison here. So I'm going to search for a size box here and drag it onto the canvas panel. And then I'm going to drag a, get a scale box. And these are very similar. And I don't know if you can see this very well on the screen, but you'll notice the scale box has like double arrows inside of it. And the size box has like, it looks like brackets on the width and the height side of it. So they perform two different things and it can be very, very confusing. If we hover over this, I don't know if it'll say it down here. Yeah, it says what the size box is and a widget that allows you to specify the size it reports to have and desire. Not all widgets report a desired, <laughs> a desired size that you actually desire. It's a weird sentence. Not all widgets report a desired size that you actually desire. Ha, huh. what a weird way to say something. You know, I think what they're trying to say there is not everything's the size you want it to be. I think that's all they mean there. And then putting them in a size box forces them to be the size you want it to be. So why not just say that? Not everything's the size you want it to be. That seems clear enough. And the scale box, this one is interesting too. If I hover over it, it says allows you to place content with a desired size and have it scale to meet the constraints placed on this box's allotted area. What I take this to mean is just that it is fit to size, size to fit. So the way I'm thinking of size box is that it basically forces a side regardless of aspect ratio and that scale box scales it but respects aspect ratios. Before I go too far down this rabbit hole, I do want, let me just delete this, and I wanna talk about something up here called fill screen. You'll notice it says fill screen, and there's this word desired again. And you notice how three of these have screen behind them, like one is fill screen, one is custom on screen, and the other one is desired on screen. Screen is referring to this here, screen size. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna talk about desired, and I'm going to talk about fill screen. So fill screen is just what it says. So if I get a canvas panel, let me get an image and drag it onto the seat, right? There's an image, right? And you notice it's on fill screen, right? And that is literally filling the screen size that this is. What size is this? Well, we can click down here and see this is 1920 by 1080. So this image, which actually has a size of 32 by 32, but we don't notice any degradation in resolution because it's just a color, a solid color, so we're not, not seeing the de degradation of the resolution. It looks like it's good resolution, but it's actually 32 by 32, filling 1920 by 1080 right here. It's literally filling the screen. Now, how big is this actual item? It's 32 by 32. So what does desired mean? Desired is essentially the size that something is. It is what it is. So desired is what it is. So if I click desired, look, it's 32 by 32, which is what it is. That's the size that it is. This is a 32 by 32 image. So I don't know why they use the word desired, but desired is what it is. It's the size that it is. And fill screen means it's actually filling the screen. So I just wanted to clarify that before I went any further because I found that terminology a little confusing. So let's go back to the example here and we'll get a canvas panel and we'll drag it on and it's noticing it's filling the screen too and it is what size? It's 1920 by 1080. And then I'm gonna get a scale box here and drag that on the canvas panel and then I'm gonna get a size box. And cutting to the chase a little bit on this, 
the main thing that I'm getting out of this whole thing is that I probably would want to use the scale box most of the time because it maintains the aspect ratio. But let me show you something here. If we get some text and we drag it into the scale box here, and I click on the scale box, hopefully I can move it. Let me move it here. Let me get the scale box and we drag it right here. Notice as I resize it, the block, the text sizes, resizes with it, but notice it's maintaining its aspect ratio. So as I, and I can resize this to really small or really big, but the scale box is keeping the aspect ratio. Now this is what was really interesting to me. If I put the text in the size box, watch what happens. I can, it's a child. The text block is a child of the size box. So if I click the size box, the text comes with it. But watch what happens when I resize this. Nothing, nothing happens. So the, the size box actually has no effect on text. Even if I click size to content, well, I can't even, I can move it, can I, I can move it, but it doesn't really have any effect on anything. So the size box doesn't work with everything. So, or at least doesn't work with text. But now if I go in here and I get an image, let me search for image real fast. And I drag this on the size box. Look. If I click on the size box, as I resize it, it resizes too. So the size box works with images. But notice we're not maintaining aspect ratio. You can't really tell that because of the image. I have an image in here that I brought in and it's 160 by 90 and it's just a, a little graphic here. But notice if I click on the size box, and drag it around, notice how it's not maintaining its aspect ratio. I can force it to fit. I can force it to fit somewhere. I can force this to fit somewhere, but it's not maintaining aspect ratio. And I'm not sure you'd want that kind of distortion most of the time. I think you'd want to maintain aspect ratio most of the time. That's what I would think. Unless you were like in a pinch and you really just wanted to force something in. Now there's all these controls over here and they're really confusing. But the image, which is 32 by 32, well, I guess the image size is 160 by 90. Notice that it is a child of the size box. So here is where I can force an actual specific size. So if for some reason I wanted, let's say if I go on the image and it's 160 by 90, let's say I wanted, for some reason I wanted to be 200, 200 by 100 for some reason. I would come here, I could go to size to content and override here and I could go 200 by 100. And I'm literally forcing the size of that child object inside of there. But again, it's not necessarily maintaining the aspect ratio. So anyway, just to kind of summarize, we've got our scale box that's essentially sized to fit. It seems to work even with text and it maintains aspect ratio. And then we have the size box that essentially forces a size if it's sized to content, right? Then we can override the child properties and resize it. We can literally force the size of the object and lock it in here if we do the overrides. If we turn this off, we have more flexibility and can just resize it any way we want, but it's not going to necessarily maintain the aspect ratio unless we put that in numerically, exactly what the aspect ratio would be. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.